Hi, I'm Patu from Free Cal. Today, let's take a look at Nifty index funds and find out which one or uh, which of them have the lowest of tracking errors. So tracking error essentially means that uh, it's, a, it's a measure of how much the fund has deviated from the underlying benchmark. You may have heard the risk measure called standard deviation. Standard deviation is a measure of volatility or up and down movements. So the way they measure standard deviation is, for example, over um, the last three years, you have these uh, 36 months and they find out the average monthly return and they find out the uh, uh, how much each monthly return uh, has uh, uh, deviated from the average monthly return. So they calculate individual monthly return minus average monthly return and that gives you a list of 36 data points and that 36 data points they take the standard deviation of. That means that they find out what is the average deviation uh, from the monthly average. So uh, higher the standard deviation, higher the ups and downs in the funds NAV or the monthly return. Uh, the same formula is used for tracking error. Only difference is instead of finding average, what they do is oh, let's say you want to calculate over uh, last three years, you have 36 um, uh, fund uh, monthly returns, you have 36 benchmark monthly returns, you find out the uh, individual difference. So for example, January um, uh, fund monthly return minus January benchmark monthly return and so on. And then you calculate the uh, uh, the average of those deviations and uh, uh, that's called the standard deviation. Of course, the calculation is done in such a way that the, the value is always positive. So it's not just the typical average formula, it's a slightly different uh, formula. But that doesn't matter, but uh, the, the tracking error will always be positive and it will depend on the duration and higher the tracking error, uh, higher is the deviation from the benchmark. But the problem is that, uh, like we will see in this article itself, uh, in this video itself, you will, you will find that low tracking error does not mean that the actual investor return is better. Because as an investor in the fund, my in the Nifty index fund, my job is, my aim would be to, sorry, to get a return as close as possible to the benchmark and uh, low tracking error does not mean as close a return as possible to the benchmark. And the other problem which I've been uh, been saying for a long time is people make the mistake of assuming that lower expenses means lower tracking error. That's got nothing to do. A fund with a higher expense can have a low tracking error also and ETFs which has got typically half the expense ratio of index funds can have high tracking error because you have to look at the tracking error with respect to the price of the ETF and not the NAV of the ETF. The, the, the returns that you see on the web is all calculated from the NAV. The tracking error that you see is all calculated from the uh, from the uh, NAV. It's not done with the actual price which the investors will have to pay when they buy, buy and sell. And if you are not careful, you can lose a lot of money when you uh, try to sell or buy uh, ETFs. So uh, my suggestion is for retail investors, they are, they are better off without ETFs. Don't worry about it. Stick to index funds. Also, thank you for the response to the uh, free seminar on portfolio management. I will leave the Google for, form link uh, in the pinned comment today also. Uh, I, I, it's going to be a very basic seminar. Don't expect when I say portfolio management, don't expect some hocus pocus, this ratio, that ratio, nothing. It's going to be app absolutely basic it is for a person with no financial knowledge how to start investing the right way that's all and it's going to be a simple set of slides i have been saying the same thing a lot of things uh, uh, will be same there's nothing new in it and that's why i'm not going to uh, make it paid uh, it's just going to be probably hopefully in a better structured way because i have become a little older let's see so i'll leave the link so there are a lot of index fund uh, resources uh, at Free FinCal. There's a separate category on index investing. You can have a look at that. Also some links are provided in the article today. So let's get to the data. So the um, this is the list of index funds and that's about 13 funds. I have left out the LNT Nifty fund and the Motala Losfal Nifty index fund because they're less than a year old. So we're not going to look at that. So the first thing what I did was to take a look at the tracking error over the last one, two, three, four, five, six year periods. Uh, with respect to the uh, with respect to July 8th, 2020 and the data is taken from a paid tool called ASMF. I found that IDBA Nifty Index Fund and a UTI Nifty Index Fund were the clear winners in terms of taking the first two positions of the lowest tracking error. Amusingly, IDBA has got 0.3% expense ratio, current expense ratio, that's three times more than UTI. And the uh, AUM is only 181 crores, whereas UTI has got something like uh, 2000 plus 2100, 147 crores or something like that. 
and the third and the fourth place go to hdfc index fund and nifty index fund all all of them nifty uh, yeah nifty index funds uh, so but then does it mean that you are going to get better returns so we have to correlate it with the returns and that's what i did next and if I, and that's the data of the returns you can have a look at the data at the uh, in the article i'm not going to uh, read those numbers out then i looked at the return differences that is i looked at the uh, index return nifty 50 tier total returns index return minus the fund return that will be that should hopefully be po uh, positive because the nifty index should always get the higher return because of the expenses the fund should get lower return and then i inspected the return differences and i found that uta nifty index fund was on the top three in terms of the lowest return difference that is the the amount that you lose because of the expenses and tracking errors was the lowest for nifty icici uh, also did quite well hd idbi uh, aside from the last two years it has done quite uh, uh, IDBA did well. I mean, last two years IDBA did well, but uh, be before that it has not done well. In the case of HDFC, it was Ulta. Um, uh, it has also, I mean, both of them, I think, sorry, let me have a look at it. I keep forgetting. Yeah, IDBA has done quite well in the last two years. Uh, in the in the past, it has not done well, but the HDFC fund, in the past, it, didn't, it, do re it did reasonably well, but last two years, the performance has dropped a little bit. But that doesn't mean it's bad. So clearly UTA Nifty Index Fund is a, is a clear winner in terms of lowest tracking error and lowest return difference. IDBI has done well uh, recently, but it's got too low AUM, so you cannot, I don't think you should consider it. Uh, ICICI and HDFC are also not bad, or, but HDFC is probably a bit better. It's, I, uh, ICICI, not bad, but you have UTA, but the point is that you can't uh, see the point is this you everybody can't go and choose UTA Nifty index fund. That's also a, not a good idea. So you should have options. HDFC and ICIC are not so bad as well. So my suggestion is when you want to choose index funds, don't worry about tracking error. Look at the return differences like this. That will help you. Maybe you can also look at SIP returns as well. I will try and I'm trying to build a sheet monthly sheets just like my screener. Let's see how that pans out. Bye-bye.